This isn't working. I'm just going to start. I'm not even going to introduce myself. Go for it. All right, so Sham, I need you to come here and get this going on the TV. <laughs> really? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Right now. We need the slides. Okay. So, yeah, it's a good time to turn off your phone. <laughs> Marcel. Sorry. Okay. All right, so the topic tonight is ketosis and cancer. So I have a number of successes. And um, <clears throat> I'm a chiropractor, my name is Darren Schmidt, and I've been working with diet and nutrition and supplements uh, hardcore since 1998. And my goal is to figure out how much good can we do just with nutrition and supplements alone. And uh, I keep finding new things that can be solved by doing that. So when I learned about ketosis, like, well, I learned about it in the late 90s. But there was some mis missing data, and there's more new data now in the last five, six years. So I really started studying about two years ago. And um, basically, ketosis means your body's burning fat. And <clears throat> ketones are water-soluble chemicals that your body makes from fat. And ketones kill cancer cells. The other thing is that ke uh, cancer cells cannot use ketones or fat as a fuel. They can only use sugar or other forms of sugar, one of them being um, lactate, that's a kind of sugar, and there's the other ones. So <clears throat> here's a book called Cancer as a Metabolic Disease by a guy named Dr. Thomas Seyfried, and he's at Boston College. And he was doing research for pharmaceutical companies, um, oncology, and uh, chemotherapy. And he came upon the work of Dr. Otto Warburg, who figured out how cancer cells respire how they breathe how they metabolize and Otto Warburg it took him eight years to figure this out he got the Nobel Prize in 1931 on the involvement of what were known at the time the respiratory enzymes and how that can help with solving that solution solving the problem so what are the respiratory enzymes those are B vitamins so at the time they just used different language so I'm going to talk about that, the B vitamins, with these slides. Um, but uh, So now Thomas Seyfried was defunded. He can't get any more grants. He's been blacklisted. And now he's being funded by Dr. Joseph Mercola, who's like, how do I call him? The father of Internet medicine. Mercola's cool. And he's plenty wealthy now with his sales of products that help people. So he's funding uh, Seyfried, which is awesome. Yeah, to did you know that? That he was, okay, cool. So this book has like, I think it was 1,300 scientific references on cancer and ketosis. This is a textbook. This is a hardcore reading right here. It's good stuff. So um, <clears throat> now in the last two years, I had a guy, I'll just list off some of the successes. A guy with sarcoma on his neck. Those can grow really big. You know, they kill, right? They can get this big. And it was small, and after six months of eating the right way, his sarcoma died on the inside, and it was calcified on the outside. I had a woman, she was a patient of mine a long time ago, and I didn't see her for a long time. And then she found my YouTube channel. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer that metastasized to the brain. She started doing keto, and it went away. And she had been through surgery. She had been through you know, uh, the, the, the standard conventional treatment. And it kept coming back, kept coming back. But after ketosis, you know, nine months later, it had not, not come back. A woman with lung cancer that metastasized to the brain three months later, that was gone. And, um, and I know I'm missing something. Oh, a woman with breast cancer that she had treated last fall on one side by conventional medicine. And on the other side, they left it alone because it was too small. They said, let's check it in six months. Maybe it'll be bigger. Maybe we can do something about it then. So she saw me in this a few months ago, and it only took six weeks. And the other side was totally solved. Okay, so she had uh, surgery on the one side. They left the right side alone. And then when they did the um, MRI, 
in mid-March, then this was solved because of the diet. Okay, so now if I had cancer, I'm going to tell you what I would do. And if, or if somebody in my family had cancer and would listen to me, <laughs> this is what I'd have them do. Yeah. What? I, I'm already on that. <laughs> okay. So... I gotta back up. If I had it, so minimum 20 hours of fasting a day, and then a four-hour eating window. So you can zoom in. Make sure you zoom in so everybody at, on social media can see it. So it says minimum 20 hours of fasting daily, consuming six tablespoons of oil per day during that fasting time. Now this is what I would do because I weigh this much. Now if I was 300 pounds, I would just stop eating. I wouldn't eat any food for six weeks. Okay, that's called fasting. And the purpose of not eating any food is to get your body to start burning the fat, get into ketosis, and then another concept called autophagy, which means now, now the cells are dying. What cells die first? Pathological tissue. Moles, skin tags, cancer cells, fat cells, fibroids, cysts. Your body gets rid of that stuff first before it goes into starvation mode to eat your muscles. Okay, so a guy like me, and I'll probably never do this in my life, but a guy like me should be able to fast for 40 days and burn 96% fat the whole time, and only 4% of my energy would be coming from muscle. And that would occur at the very beginning and then at the very end of 40 days. And if I go 50 days, then that might be starvation, and that's when I'm burning muscle, okay? So, but if somebody's 300 pounds, they could go 60 days, 90 days, maybe longer. I, I met a guy, he was at day 120 when I talked to him, and he had dropped 180 pounds. He had a lot of weight to lose. And at one time, I was at a health expo, and a woman came to me and asked me, uh, what do you think about fasting? And I said, I don't know, this is a long time ago. I didn't know much about it. She told me she was 400 pounds. She had cancer all over her body. She didn't know what to do, so she prayed about it, and she was given the answer to stop eating food. So she didn't eat food for six weeks. And then she only ate food after that just on Saturday and Sunday. So she's doing five-hour fasting, and she lost all that weight. When I talked to her, she was normal weight, and she said she would sit on the toilet, and the cancer would come out of her, into the toilet. Okay, so now... I'll, okay, so moving on. So maximum maximum four hour eating window per per uh, 24 hour day um, consuming fresh organic vegetable juice during that time and coming out of ketosis fatty salads and protein during this time so when I say fatty salad there's a lot of greens in there a lot of vegetables and oils and so the woman that reversed her breast cancer a few months ago in six weeks she ate animal protein she ate animal fat so you can't say that animal fat and protein causes cancer the re the randomized clinical controlled trials show that red meat does not cause heart disease does not cause cancer saturated fat animal fat does not cause heart disease does not cause cancer that says that in the rent in the rcts randomized controlled trials all right but when you, when you look at epidemiological studies that's a whole different way of doing research, and you cannot get cause from an epidemiological study. Okay, so what that means is, this is what researchers do. They'll create a survey, and they'll say, how much red meat do you eat? How many apricots do you eat? What about this food, that food? Over the last 10 years, and how's your health? And then they get these submissions back, and they try to figure out, well, these people who are healthy eat this way and these people who are not healthy eat this way you cannot get cause from that let me go I'm gonna go a little bit more into this okay so I was gonna do a whole video on this but here I'm talking about it so people who eat red meat are non adherers they do not listen to their medical doctor and what do medical doctors say eat low fat right and then people who who adhere to their doctor they listen to their doctor and what do they do they eat beans and they, they avoid the meat, okay? And they also, the adherers also do not smoke, they exercise more, and they wear their seatbelt, 
And the nine in here is smoke more, drink more, exercise less, and they don't wear their seatbelt. Okay, so the nine in here is are sicker. Does that mean red meat makes them sick? No, you can't tell that from an epidemiological study. You have to do a, an, you have to do a, um, a controlled trial. You have to do an experiment. Okay, so there's a lot of confusion in the nutrition world because researchers say this study shows that red meat is bad. Well, what kind of study is it? If it's epidemiological, if it's empirical, if it's observational, you cannot get cause from those kinds of studies. And one last thing about this, those studies are cheap. That's why everybody does them, right? But when you do an experiment and you have a group of people and you do something to them and you have a control, that's not cheap. That's expensive and that's discouraged because the profit margin is less on the grant that they receive. You got that? All right, cool. So red meat is not dangerous. Eating fat is not dangerous, okay? I'm going to get into that a little bit more later. Okay, so, um, and then I'd, then I'd be checking blood ketones, blood ketosis, using the Keto Mojo, which we sell. Can you grab that with the two packets the, in the bag? Before the four-hour eating window. So let's say my eating window is from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, and then I fast from 6 p.m. to 2 p.m. I would check for ketones or, you know, ketosis beginning at 2, 2 p.m. All right, that's the best time that you're probably in ketosis. So when we sell uh, Keto Mojo, it comes in a packet like this. This is the device, and then it comes with two boxes. One has 50 strips of glucose, glucose strips, and the other one has 50 ketone strips. And this has 10 ketone strips. So you get a ton of ketone strips, but you only get like 10 needles. 10 pokers for your finger. And then we sell this. Single use, I'm not gonna open it, but single use pokers. So you do it once, throw it away. If you wanna buy the, uh, um, the poker that comes with this, like um, refills, you gotta go straight to keto-mojo.com keto to order from them. Okay, so there's that. Um, so the goal is to get your GKI glucose ketone index less than 1.0 every single day at, for example, 2 p.m. And then you eat a bunch of vegetables and vegetable juice. These are carby. And you eat some protein. And you're not so eating so much fat. And then you come out of ketosis during that time. So now you're out of ketosis, let's say, from 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. Okay, so what you're doing is you're exercising your cells to burn fat and then burn sugar every day. Burn fat, burn sugar. Burn. Cancer cells can't do that. Cancer cells only want to burn sugar. Okay, so you're really stressing them out when you do that. Does that make sense? Okay, now GKI, I got a video on this. I'm not going to get in too much into it, but it's the glucose ketone index. It tells you whether or not you're actually in ketosis. Okay. All right, next slide. Um, there's herbs that I would take. There's not a lot of them. Ginseng. I would take high doses of high quality ginseng because it's been shown throughout decades to revert can uh, cancer cells back into normal functioning cells. And then uh, K2, D3, vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 combined. And, um, and then in the meantime, I would do whatever else comes up when I do the muscle testing. Okay, so I pulled a couple supplements um, that, I'm, that I really like. This is a, a new detox supplement we've been working with. It's called HMET Binder, Heavy Metal Dash Environmental Toxin Binder. So that's good for heavy metals. And um, I know that I met the scientist this past weekend who developed that, and I know the owners of the company, brilliant. <laughs> and this is a greens drink. This is actually chocolate flavored. But uh, during this time of the uh, four hour eating window, you can make uh, vegetable juice by using, you don't want to use a, a fast spinning blade. What you want to use is a slow screw type juicer. The most expensive one is called the Norwalk. It's the highest quality one. But you can get this uh, screw type juicers for like 300 bucks up to 500 bucks online now. Um, and so that way there's no heat. It just presses the vegetable matter up against the walls Right, and then the juice comes out, and then the fiber is pushed out the end. So got that? No fast spinning blade. It creates heat, which breaks down vitamins and enzymes. 
you don't want any heat. And if you don't want to do any juicing and make your own juices, you can just do something like this. So we have the chocolate flavor and we got the regular green one. And um, so the point here is you just scoop it in water, stir it up, drink it. And if you like the flavor, great. It's got more of a stevia flavor. This actually tastes like Count Chocula cereal from the 1970s <laughs> when I ate that. Um, but you can go to a local health food store. And, and look, this has like a ton of things in it, nutrients and plants and stuff. But if you go to a health food store and you just get organic, let's say, barley alfalfa combination. Or, you know, cruciferous and kale. You know, two, three, five ingredients, that's, that's good. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so other therapies I would do, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So you get into a tube and you lay down, they zip you up, and then they start pumping up the oxygen and the pressure goes up to uh, four, I think it's four PSI. That's by law, they can't go above that unless it's a different professional um, environment. And so now this is highly recommended by Thomas Seyfried and uh, Dominic D'Agostino, another researcher in the area. Um, and you can get one yourself, you know, like, uh, I was at a seminar this past weekend and the prices, I remember one price was 9000 another one was 11000 And there may have been one cheaper, maybe 6000 Okay. And then sauna. So there's one sauna, the one that I purchased, and I have it at my house, it's called Therasage. It's an infrared. You've heard of uh, far infrared uh, sauna or a far infrared light or near infrared. This is full spectrum infrared. So it's far and near infrared. Now you can't see the infrared. It's, there's no color to it. It's not in the color spectrum. Okay, but the guy that made Therasage, um, he traveled the world for years trying to figure out what material will impart the different frequencies within the infrared infrared range and so when you buy this it comes with a drape if you will of rocks one on one side one on the other when you're sitting in this cubicle your head sticking out you can stick your hands out and type you know or control the TV <laughs> so it's just your hands and your head and then this thing heats up to you know up to 170 and, and then you're sweating like really I was say you're just sweating <laughs> profusely Within 20 minutes, I'm sweating, and then I get out, take a shower. Okay, so it gets rid of toxins, and that's been well studied, and uh, including heavy metals and chemicals, and then mycotoxins, which are what mold makes. That comes out through your skin during a sauna. Okay, remo uh, this is a big deal, and I don't really talk about it as much as I, I should. I, I mean, it's in my survey. It's in my introductory paperwork, but removing mercury fillings from your teeth by bi biological dentist. Now in Europe there are several cancer clinics. They will not take you unless all your fillings are out and all your infections in your jaw, known as cavitations, are cleared. So there's dentists that will do this and I have the website iaomt.org and they wrote and check for cavitations and clear them. So yeah, these clinics in, in Europe if your teeth aren't cleaned up, they're not even going to take you, okay? And then I, I wrote, address lactic acidosis by taking Cataplex B or others. So I've talked about this plenty on my channel, but Cataplex B was designed by Dr. Royal Lee between the years 1925 and he released them in 1934 to fix lactic acidosis. So cancer cells, according to Dr. Otto Warburg, basically burn sugar You've heard of glycolysis, hopefully maybe in eighth grade school or whatever. Glycolysis is burning sugar. And there's a lot of that in cancer going on. And then there's a waste product called lactate. And the body starts using lactate as a fuel too. That's lactic acidosis. And so that's what a cancer cell is doing. Okay. And then um, when you try to s solve that problem, you add oxygen to it. And the cell says, I don't care, I'm still burning lactate, right? Whereas normally you'd act, you would add oxygen and the cell goes back to normal metabolism. Did I lose anybody? Was that easy enough? I'm trying to keep this, nobody's answering me, so that was too much. Okay, the point is... Does, does, it, kill, does it kill the cell, the cancer cell? No. 
No, okay. no. So caterp no this, but that's a good Run question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me say it this way. Um, so okay, so here's the deal. So you got a lot of sugar burning going on in the cells, and the waste product that I'm talking about here is lactate. There's other waste products, and you get an excessive amount of lactate. Okay, that's the problem, and the cells start using that as a fuel. How do you lower the lactate? You yeah, and there's also acid that comes with it, lactic acidosis, right? So you can't just lower it, you, like you can't just lower the acid by taking baking soda. You can't just lower the lactate by, there's a drug called DCA, it just lowers lactate. You can't just lower it. You got to actually fix the problem, right? So what's the problem? The body's not clearing the lactate out on its own. So what organs clear out the lactate on it, you know, what organs clear out the lactate from the body? Liver. All of them. Yeah, liver, liver no adrenal, more. thyroid, parathyroid, spleen, pancreas. And this was discovered in the 20s. And then so cataplex B has number one liver and then other nutritional factors that supply more B vitamins. And then there's more support too for other organs. So the father of endocrinology, Henry Harrower, said that... Um, as I read through his manual, 650 pages, I haven't read all of it, but I hit the highlights. He's talking about the thyroid, and he goes, yeah, the thyroid has a deaminating effect, meaning it clears the blood. And the parathyroid has a deaminating effect. And, you know, he's just listing all these organs, they all clean the blood. So, anyways, so cataplex B has a broad range of nutritional support for organs that clear the blood of lactate and all the other poisons that are making the st cells starve. And then they, they're starving of oxygen, and they can't use oxygen in, in their fuel production, so they end up using lactate without oxygen, and that is cancer. Do you get that? Oh, I hope I yeah, said that good. That. Okay, good. Make making me nervous. <laughs> Did you get that? I'm getting it. Okay, good. All right, you can always say replay, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. All right, um, okay, so cataplex B. So um, I'm always eating liver in some way, whether it's on my plate or in a pill. Always eating liver. Okay, so next one. Um, okay, if I, if I was a cancer patient, then I'd always be researching more therapies. Here's a great website, cancertutor.com. And the guy that runs that has studied over 600 therapies. And uh, there's a lot on there. So now ketosis and the ketogenic diet you know, fasting, ketosis, all that. That's the foundation, period. You, you do it. That's what you do. Then you add stuff to it. So you add the sauna, you add hyperbaric oxygen, you add whatever else uh, that you find is necessary or beneficial for you when you do the research. And that could include the conventional therapies. So research the success rate of the chemo, radiation, and surgery approach by medicine for your diagnosis, they've been keeping track of their success since the 1980s. They have the statistics on their success. And you have to ask them for it. You may have to ask them multiple times because they may not want to tell you what the success is. And I've been through that with several patients where they can't get an answer to how successful is my chemo or radiation. Okay. Um, so I'm a big fan of, I'm gonna start with the Rife machine. Um, the Rife machine is a machine that imparts a frequency into the air through a bulb or imparts a frequency into your body through a foot bath, like through the water. And I own a Rife machine. You can buy them as cheap as 400 bucks, or you can pay as much as 5000 There's several on the market. And I actually use one every night. I just turn it on before I go to bed and I, it's, it runs for four hours or six hours depending on the frequency that it, the program that I pick. And I have to tell you, like, as I go through these therapies, I'm pretty much doing all of them already, and I don't have cancer, and I don't have heart disease, or diabetes, or any disease. Because what you do is you prevent it by doing healthy things. So I'll fast like 24 hours a couple of times a month. And um, I'll consume large quantities of oil and get into ketosis a couple of times a month. I eat plenty of vegetables. I check my GKI. I check for ketones in my blood. I take herbs. I take ginseng. Um, 
I don't have the hyperbaric oxygen therapy, but I do have the sauna. I have no, I had my fillings taken out back in the late 90s, the mercury fillings. Um, I'm taking the liver for the lactic acidosis. Okay. Now let's talk about the Budwig diet a little bit. So Joanna, Dr. Joanna Budwig, and she was German. She died in 03, and she was 97 years old. And she was one of the team members who worked with Dr. Otto Warburg back in the day. And the reason why I bring her up now is because I just had a guy fly in from Barbados, and he was with me this afternoon and yesterday for three appointments. One year ago, his PSA, the prostate test for cancer, was 262. So his cancer had metastasized to his leg, into his bone, into his back, and he could feel it. His leg was hurting, his thigh was hurting, his back was hurting. And he had been to the Gerson Clinic in Mexico. He had been to the Hippocrates Clinic in Florida. And he had been to these other doctor people I hadn't even heard of. And each time he got his PSA tested, it kept climbing up, up, up. And then he learned about the Budwig diet, which is, I'm pretty sure it's in CancerTutor.com. So he flew to Germany to learn how to do it right. And um, it's been a year, you know, he was going to die a year ago. But all of his pain is gone, and he's not dead, and his energy is great. And he just wanted to, you know, have me test him for lactic acidosis and all that. Now, he hasn't rechecked his PSA, so we don't know what his PSA is, but he's not dead. Because a year ago, he's going to be dead. So let's talk about the Budwig diet a little bit. So what Dr. Budwig figured out was that in order, okay, here's, so imagine your cells are filled with fat. They're clogged with fat. So that's a form of cell starvation, and because of that, they can start reverting back, reverting to the lactic acidosis I was telling you about, okay? So a solution is get the fat out of the cells. Well, how do you do that? There's, um, there's two ways. One is to eat a lot of fat and get into ketosis, um, or, well, there's three ways. The other way is to not eat any food, get into ketosis. That'll clean all that out. You can, or you can go totally vegan and have no fat, no protein, all plants. All three of those work. <laughs> Bad face. I saw you rolling your eyes. Oh, man. I need blinders like this so I don't look at chat. I won't do that. <laughs> okay, but what Budwig discovered was that if you have the right types of fat and the right types of protein, that combination will emulsify... Or, or lice, lipolytic, it'll take the fat and, and cut it. Lip, it's lipolytic, okay? Um, lipo meaning fat, lice meaning, meaning to cut. So now in Germany, at the, time, <clears throat> at the time, there were a few things that were ready, readily available that anybody could get, and here's what they were. Uh, flaxseed oil, or flax, okay? You gotta make the oil, you gotta chop up the flax. And the other one was cottage cheese. Okay, now the cottage cheese provides the protein that she's looking for. So she was recommending low fat. Um, I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me on this. But, but the oil is the flaxseed oil. So you're combining that oil plus the, f plus the protein of the cottage cheese. Do that daily. And then plants the rest of the day. And so this what this guy from Barbados was doing and fixed his body up after having multiple failures. Now you could possibly do the Budwig diet and it may not work for you. But that's your research, you know, that's what you got to figure out for your body. And of course, dur during this whole time, I don't even need to say this, but during this whole time, no sugar, right? Mm. No bread, no pasta, no grains, no rice, right? I don't care that you grew up on Count Chocula cereal like I did. Doesn't mean you eat it now. Okay. All right, so reading, reading Budwig in the last two days has been fantastic. And that, this is a time... We're talking 1940s, 50s, 60s, when she was um, irritating the standard medical society, and they were taking her to court. Three times they took her to court, and it got thrown out, and, or she was found innocent. Three times. And then during this time, they're promoting low fat and eat sugar. Okay, so I'm going to move on. So here's uh, slide four. Now, now, if it's dire, cachexia. Cachexia is when your body is wasting away 
and um, you're nearing towards the end and it's not good. <clears throat> um, so there's um, such things as, let me look a little bit more about cachexia. So I mentioned lactic acidosis, okay? The pathological process of chronic disease, not just cancer, but all chronic disease. That accelerated is cachexia. The lactic acid, the lactic acid cycle is the same cycle as cachexia. It's the same exact thing, okay? So when you're dying, you're losing weight, you can't stand up straight, your shoulders are collapsing, your body is starting to smell because it's dying on the inside, cachexia. So now what do you do? Okay, you gotta make sure your appetite is up and keep eating as many calories as you can. So there's a homeopathic appetite enhancer. And then possibly add a ketone powder. I used to sell, you can buy ketones in a powder form and put it in water and drink it. Now the research has shown that if you're eating the standard American diet and your insulin is too high and your blood sugar is too high, then you add ketone powder to it, now you got all three things are too high. That's not good and that can lead to disease. So I used to sell ketone powders, but I quit selling because I learned that. All right, even, it can even feed cancer. So now um, I would maybe only recommend it if there's a cachexic state. Okay, what does cachexia mean? You know what it means? It actually means from the ancient Greek. It means bad habits, which is sugar, right? And it also means withholding one's power. So you don't want to go outside, right? Because maybe you're anxious or afraid because your health is so bad. Your, the biochemistry of your blood is so bad. You're just fearful, okay? And, you, and then you get weaker and you can't go outside. You can't interact with people. You hold back your power, okay? And I, I wrote here, keep the calories up. And then if it's cachexic, maybe, um, and, you're, and you're at 300, you know, if, if you have, and you still have some weight on you, you got to figure out with your doctor. Okay, buckle down on cycling in and out of ketosis robustly. So in ketosis, your GKI is less than 1.0. If you have questions on that, just see my videos. Out. Measure the GKI after, eating the win after the eating window also. Okay. All right. I pulled a couple quotes from Budwig's book. And uh, what's cool is that she talks about uh, half of her, one of her books that I read, half of it was on physics. And I like to study physics. And here's what she says. The electrons of highly unsaturated fats from seed oils like flaxseed oil, which lie on the same wavelength as sunlight, are capable of drawing solar energy and storing it. Then upon demand of activating it as the purest energy. So flaxseed oil helps you store energy from the sun. And let's say you eat some flaxseed oil and then you sit down on the couch for the next three hours watching YouTube, exercising your finger. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to go outside and walk. Now the flaxseed oil helps you activate the energy. Now you're going to get the energy that you need. Um, and so that's from page 57. Her book that I read last night was Flax. This is the name of the book. Flax oil as a true aid against arthritis, heart infarction, which is heart attack, cancer, and other diseases. Um, now, there's another section of the book where, and I, I'm totally paraphrasing this comment here. The true statements, fats, quote, fats dissolve tumors, and then the other quote is, fat can cause tumors, are so contradictory, they have misled researchers for decades. So you get what I'm saying here? Like, fat deposition in the cells, it's a form, it's a way that the s cells starve and start to go into a chronic state of disease. So fat causes disease. But then you eat a bunch of fat and it solves the same problem, right? It's like you can drown in water or it can save your life. It's the same substance. You just have to do it right, right? Okay, cool. So decades of, of misleading research caused by this contradictory statement. Yeah, fat is good for you. Eat good fat. Oh, no, fat is bad. Okay. All right. Um, 
I'm going to go over the Hegstead equation. Uh, here's this example. I see this on YouTube quite a bit. There's a guy named Mark Hegstead, and he passed away back in, I think it was 07. He was in his 90s. And uh, he is a nutritionist researcher. And he's a, he's a guy that stood in front of the USDA, and he said, we need to recommend a low-fat diet, because what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> <laughs> That was like in the late 70s, and a lot of worse things happened after that. So here's this equation named after him, and down here we have percentage of calories from fat. So let's say 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, and then up here we have LDL in the blood. Okay, and so there's, there was a collection of studies this started to show that the per greater percentage of fat or calories from fat caused the LDL to go up. Okay, and over decades, uh, it became more and more populated by more and more studies. And I think they're at like 400 studies showing that, look, stop eating fat because it causes LDL to go up. Okay, but here's the problem. It only goes to 40%. Now, this, this is not ketosis. This is the standard American diet, which is horrible. High in carbs, high in grains, high in junk. And then you add fat? Yeah, of course. It's going to be, you're going to get sick, right? So if you bring this up to 75, let's say 80%, there's a boom, the LDL just drops. So it's kind of like flipping a light switch on, but only 40%. And the room is still dark. And it's like, I knew it. Electricity doesn't work. See, look, I'm flipping the switch, but you're only flipping at 40%. So the Hegstead equation thoroughly debunked right here. They just, the dosage wasn't high enough. The fat percentage wasn't high enough. It's like saying, you know, you, got, you find somebody who's really thirsty and you give them this much water. I'm like, I'm still thirsty. Oh, I, I knew it. Water doesn't work. Okay. All right. All right, cool. I think I'm done. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> what? Look at that face. What? Um, you mentioned the machine with the frequency. The rice machine. Oh, machine. Yeah. yeah. Is AquaChi kind of like that? I've heard of the AquaChi. Yeah, the rice machine. No, the AquaChi is one frequency, one program that sends frequencies through your feet. Whereas the rice machine, similar concept, but a wider variety of frequencies and programs. Okay. Questions on cancer and ketosis? I had two people who went through their conventional medical treatment and their results were so fast that the doctors had never experienced a healing so fast. So, and I've mentioned this several times, but one guy, he had colon cancer and they had special meetings at U of M hospital and they're trying to figure out why he was getting better so fast. So I told his daughter, just tell them I'd be happy to go tell them. I, I, I'll go to their special meetings. And they turned me down. They said, no, it's just his chemotherapy is working really good. Yeah. Okay, good. That's great. Yeah. And then uh, the other one, a uh, guy with a brain tumor, um, his mom had asked, um, asked the surgeon, so, okay, after these six rounds of chemo, what if there's no tumor? Does he still need surgery? And the surgeon said, well, of course he's going to need surgery because there's always tumors after the chemotherapy. So they went in and there's no tumors left. So never in, in that ecologist's experience had he ever seen that much healing. And that's ketosis, right? Okay. Other question? Yeah. Why don't they check for the root canals? Just the Who's they? Yeah. Who's they? The company that you said was making sure that they had that treated before they could be a patient. You mean the oh. clinics in Europe? Yeah. Why don't they check for root canals? Yeah. Yeah, that's a dental <laughs> issue. So dentistry, that's a whole world unto itself. So if you got a nutritionist clinic or a medical clinic, I mean, they got their own thing going on. Right? Dental work, I'm glad I'm not a dentist, I'm telling you. I mean, one mistake can cause a lot of harm, you know, so. Because they were just making sure the mouth was clean before they became a patient. 
Right, in the in the cancer clinics. Cancer. Right, yeah. But are, are they not checking the root canals? And should you check that too? You mean the, the dentists? You can check root canals. And the cavitation is an infection in the jaw, mm -hmm. primarily caused by an old root canal. And you check that with a CT scan. So it's called the um, ca uh, Cavitat. There's several machines, just different names. So they do a CT scan like that of your jaw. Is that jaws. The same? Yeah, it's a, right, it's a CT scan of the jaw. And you can't necessarily find a cavitation um, just by looking, like an oral exam. There might be no pain, and an x-ray won't pick it up. Only a CT scan will find that in the jaw. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of studies that show when you go into ketosis, the drop of triglycerides, LDL, lipoprotein, A, all kinds of factors plummet. Right, now, um, of all the cardiovascular factors, LDL is the one thing that would drop the least or maybe even go up a little bit during ketosis for some people. Right, but there's no studies that show that LDL causes um, heart disease. There's no proof of that whatsoever. So LDL is a passenger in this cardiovascular disease scenario. It's not a driver. Just like lactate is a passenger in cancer, it's not a driver. The body's using lactate as a fuel, right? But it's the lactate is not causing the cancer. What's causing the cancer is cells who are starved of their nutrients and their oxygen, which could be from dirty blood, it could be from fungus in the blood, it could be from too much fat in the cells, it could be from heavy metals in the blood you know, or clogging up the cells, the cell walls. There's many different, like, scenarios going on. So that's why I showed you, like, detoxing and, um, you know, getting into ketosis to stop the excess uh, sugar metabolism. And I have all kinds of videos about the fungus I've been dealing with. Okay, other questions? Yeah. For your um, patients that were, um, had successes, did they, did they stay on their, did they do the ketosis? Are these things in conjunction with conventional therapy? Yeah, some, some of the successes were ketosis and conventional therapy. Um, others were just ketosis. Right. Normally you would probably have someone stay on the conventional, or it's up to them. I mean, it's up to them. I'm not a medical doctor. Yeah, they talk to their yeah. doctor about that. Okay. I just talk about food and nutrition. All right, don't ask me about drugs. Yeah. <laughs> what? Don't ask me about drugs. Just like don't ask your medical doctor about food. Yeah. Same thing. Right. Yeah, question. Okay, so when you had cancer, you did the traditional route, bladder cancer. Now your bladder's taken out, and you have a stint connecting your ureters. Yeah. Is there any way to heal scar tissue that's yeah. blocking? Yeah, you can heal scar tissue. The thing about surgery is that there's damage to the body, even after the surgery. So, you know, internally, scar tissue can be softened with an herb called Gotu Cola. And then externally, you treat the scar with, uh, like, wheat germ oil. Um, we have <clears throat> wheat germ oil in the form of little pearls that you have to poke it with a pin and rub it on the scar. So the reason why it's in pearls is so it doesn't go rancid. And as I was reading some of Dr. Budwig, Budwig's work, she's saying as soon as you make flaxseed oil or some sort of fresh oil like that, it starts to go rancid within 15 minutes. So you got to get that into a pearl and preserve it so there's no oxygen destroying it. And then I've heard references, you know, back in the 50s talking about when you make fresh bread, that those, um, the wheat berry is crushed and it's going to start, start going bad like on day three or day four. So eat the bread and if it's five days old, you got to throw it away or it'll kill you, right? Like over time eating rancid oils is bad. And Budwig and the, the doctors from the 50s, they talked all the time about man-made fake fats causing cancer because they're clogging up your cells, they're starving your cells, and they're blocking the cell membranes from being smart. The cells are smart because of the cell membranes around them, not the DNA, not the nucleus. The nucleus is just a storage warehouse for information. 
The DNA is just information. You can pull the nucleus and the DNA out of a cell, and the cell is totally fine. But once you start destroying the cell membrane, uh, that's when the cell starts to die. So, so a good way to destroy your cell membranes is Crisco oil, margarine, peanut oil, corn oil. Those are all fake fats that, that cause harm to the cell membrane. Canola, Canola oil is bad. Right, what's good is lard. This, it's got to come from Mother Nature. Lard and chicken skin and tallow and butter and... Huh? And then the fat that's in your meat, right? And then you put butter on it. Okay. That was a good question. Other question? He said the book of cancer is a metabolic disease. It's by Dr. Thomas. Yeah. Thomas Seyfried. Seyfried? Yeah. Okay. Do you mind handing this to her? Other questions online? Not really? Yeah, I, I hope I didn't go over anybody's head. <laughs> so back in the 50s when fats, they would take healthy fats and do something to them. This is going back earlier than that, of course, too. And then they would, they would solidify them. So that's a term Budwig talked about, solidified fats. Like that's Crisco, that's margarine. Hydrogenated is another one. Trans fats is another term. And so there are trans fats that are found naturally in uh, nature. And those are healthy. Those are healthy fats. So there's man-made trans fats. Those are the bad ones. So there's a lot to olive it. Olive and avocado oils, no good? No, those are good. So okay. I'm going to create, I'm gonna, this may be a new term for many people, but the fruit oils. Avocado is a fruit. Coconut is a fruit, okay. and olives are a fruit. All right, cool. The fruit oils are I got ab now. absolutely awesome, All right. right? As opposed to, as opposed to even some like, well, like corn oil. That's a grain. Grain oils are bad, and then some nuts and seed oils. I'm going to research more into that. But like flaxseed oil is good, but peanut oil, not so good, right? So there's just more information. Like there's more to be learned about that. But the, the, the concept of fruit oils, those are good. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, other questions? Yeah? If you're a diabetic, does it complicate this at all? No, this... <laughs> diabetes, cancer, and heart disease are all the same thing. Same thing. Excuse me. It's all the same mechanism. <clears throat> it's cells that don't work well because they're starving <clears throat> due to toxicity. So doing this fixes diabetes. Doing this fixes heart disease. It's the same thing. Isn't that weird? Okay, let me explain this. Huh? So let me explain this. I'm going to end off with this analogy. So imagine you, you break your bone, right? You, there's, you, your skin is cut and your bone is broken. Now your body's got to fix that. So what does it do? It sends a bunch of blood there. And along that, with that comes clotting, and you get later you get some fibrin, which is the scar tissue. That's all part of the healing process. And then what else goes there? White blood cells go there to kill any bacteria that may come in there and invade your body. And then you get, you know, there's other chemical mediators of inflammation. You get a swelling, you get pain. The pain tells you to stop, you know, stop what you're doing and take care of your arm. These are all the healing process. And then also, too, you get calcium that goes there to build up the bone and repair the tissues and stuff. So if you're eating bad food your whole life, that process I just described happens from head to toe. And everything gets too much calcium and everything gets stiff and scar tissue and everything, your white blood cells, your immune system is inflamed and always working and gets overworked and gets confused and now you have an autoimmune disease. So that's what bad food does to your whole body. It's this healing process everywhere. So you see older people, they're stiff. They're, everything is stiff. They got calcium everywhere. Too many kidney stones over, over time, bone spurs in their back, and they get an x-ray, and the chiropractor says you got degeneration of your back. Well, it's the same process. And you're, instead of breaking your bones with hammers, 
what you're doing is you're eating bread. It's the same process. Okay, now you have a propensity, if you continue to do this for too long, you have a propensity then to get what your genes tell your body to do. Is it going to be cancer? Is it going to be heart disease? Is it going to be chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia? And then that's what the genes end up doing. They, they're creating this, they are responding to your creation of a disease. And they're going to make that disease. That's your genes. Does that make sense? So then when you correct your whole lifestyle and your diet's good and all that stuff, you turn off all those bad genes. And you turn on the good ones. That's called epigenetics. Epi means on top of, like, like epicenter or epic. So epigenetics. It's more important what you do than what your genes are. All right, good. You know, I got to tell you, every time I look outside, I see snow. <laughs> our, kind of, our sidewalk's white. There's a white car over there. I mean, here it is, like, mid-April. It snowed today. It snowed yesterday. It's crazy. All right, cool. All right, that's it. Thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Let, let them... Yeah.